this stage, and for the first time, at that point, I talked about our e actors for Long Paul, and I was reflecting as I was driving here today how much has changed in these two years, and it's quite cool to see all the steps that we have taken within the company, but also that the industry has taken. So I wanted to share with you today uh, these steps, and of course, give you some glimpses of the highlights that we will present in the IAA this year. It's maybe not the most uh, positive start to the presentation, but I think all of us in this room know that being part of the transport industry, and more specifically, the industry of heavy-duty trucks and buses, we are definitely part of the problem when it comes to climate change. Because heavy-duty trucks and buses contribute to 7% of the world's CO2 emissions. And the number, if you look at Europe, is approximately the same, so also 7%. So that's maybe not the most uh, motivating uh, start, but on the other hand, for me, this is the great opportunity that we as an industry have. Because if we join forces in this room, we can be part of the change. And, and what we are doing in Diamond Truck, uh, we are betting on a dual strategy. So we are developing uh, both battery electric trucks, but we also believe we need hydrogen as part of the solution. And we will bring hydrogen powered trucks before the end of the decade. But today, I'm uh, focusing a little bit more here and now. I'm going to spend most of the presentation talking about our electric trucks and what we are doing in in that uh, part of the business. Actually, we already have in Diamond Truck over 10 different battery electric vehicles in series production. The first one we brought to the market already seven years ago, which was the uh, Mitsubishi Fuso e uh, which is an important part also of our European offering. Um, and we see a big uptake of the e especially in the last two, three years. And maybe to highlight two more uh, on this slide because they're part of, of my family of Mercedes-Benz trucks and the e 3 and 400 that we have in series production since 2021 and of course also the e Iconic, which is a very important uh, truck for municipal applications and also for um, uh, waste collection. Um, but I think the big, big game changer is the one um, that is coming in the end of this year, our e 600. 600 stands for kilowatt hours, that's the amount of battery we have put into this truck, which will give it a range of around 500 kilometers. We are betting on LFP technology, lithium iron phosphate, uh, which gives this truck um, long service life, it's very durable technology. So with this truck we have a, a mileage of 1.2 kilometers or 10 years, 1.2 million kilometers obviously, otherwise customers would be really <laughs> disappointed. Uh, 1.2 million kilometers and 10 years, and even after that the state of health of the battery should be 80%. So we believe this is really a game changer. We also know that with this 500 kilometer range, we are addressing a big part of the long haul business in Europe because we see from our own data that 50% of the trips in Europe are 500 kilometers daily or less, which means that many customers can convert their business without relying on public infrastructure by just installing the infrastructure in the depot, which is also not easy, but maybe a little bit easier than depending on, uh, on the public infrastructure. But I'll get to that later. And we see a huge interest from the customer side. Um, so we actually already have over, well over 1,000 firm orders for this truck. So very, very positive. And um, we also have now a couple of trucks in customer hands. So I feel uh, very optimistic on the speech I made two years ago that now it's really starting to happen. Just to 
give you a chance to look at it. Okay, give me a break. launching another activity so we will do that um, in this um, uh, in the second stage of the program which is we are launching our European testing tour yeah, oh, keep it on that one. Uh, so to keep looking at the movie um, we will actually launch our European testing tour this afternoon and we will have two e actors uh, running across 20 countries in Europe, total of around 13,000 kilometers. And we will go all the way up to the North Cap in Norway, to the southernmost point of Europe in Spain. And this is for us the most extensive testing tour we have ever done. And I know many of you will join different parts of this journey, drive parts of the distance, uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how it goes, how the trucks perform, obviously, um, but also uh, to understand about the infrastructure, how we make that happen. Um, and this is not a PR tour, it's really a tour where we want to test the trucks uh, to their fullest extent and also to really bring more attention to the big demand that we have for improving the infrastructure across Europe. Coming to the infrastructure, you mentioned it in your speech, Pramila. I think it's uh, one of the big, big challenges we have as an industry and as a European community. Today, there is around 200 high power chargers existing in Europe. And by 2030, in order to reach our targets and to really decarbonize the industry, we need around 35,000 uh, chargers. And um, part of it uh, hopefully will come through AFIR, uh, which was also mentioned by Familiar. But honestly, we need even more ambition than what we see in AFIR today. And just to give you a feeling, uh, I added this bottom of the slide. In order to reach that target, we have to actually implement 400 public charge points per month to get to the 35,000 by 2030. So definitely, this is where we need to accelerate pretty fast. And also on the hydrogen side, we are not having the speed um, that we need. Um, so I see this as the biggest challenge for us as an industry. And I think to keep highlighting that and to keep um, bringing this up. But of course, also here, we want to be part of the solution. And we are working very hard as a company to try to overcome this bottleneck. So what are we doing on the infrastructure side? Um, I think one very important thing to talk about when we talk about public charging is that we need megawatt charging. And sometimes people use the word megawatt when they actually mean 700 kilowatts. But I think we need to go for megawatts in the sense of having the one megawatt. Um, we have actually successfully charged our truck in our test center in work with one megawatt, so we know it works. And the benefit for the customer is, of course, that they can charge the battery um, from very few percent to full in around 30 minutes up to 45 minutes, which means if you enable megawatt charging, you have the 500 kilometer range. It's no problem to work in the same kind of pattern that you have today when you anyway have to take the breaks after the four and a half hours. So very important to push to get um, yeah, public charging um, also with one megawatt chargers and not just what we see today, maybe 300, 400 kilowatts. That will work for some customers, but not if we want to really decarbonize the sector. Another thing that we are doing is, of course, uh, we are gathering all of our um, charging offerings under one umbrella. We call it truck charge. And there we have our consulting services, which we have implemented since a few years back. We work with consulting our customers on how to do the switch into battery electric, because it's, of course, one thing is to electrify the depot, but it also changes the business for many customers in how they do the transport. And what we do is we work together with them to look at 
which routes make sense to decarbonize, where do you start electrifying, and how to do it very concretely, step by step. And sometimes also just to help them understand all the regulations and which kind of subsidies are available in different countries, since this is a little bit looking different all across Europe. So that's the one part. Another service that we offer is something we actually learned from our own business. We started an initiative a few years back now to decarbonize our own inbound logistics in the biggest plant that we have, uh, which is the Birch factory. And step by step, we are moving that factory over to zero emission for the whole inbound flow, which is several hundred uh, trucks a day uh, coming into the factory. And we realized when we were doing that, that this is actually something that many other industrial customers are also looking at, how can they do that? So we also do a big uh, offer where we work together with other companies to look at how they can decarbonize inbound or outbound or different parts of their flow. Of course, we also work together um, with Alpitronic to offer chargers and not only just to sell the chargers but of course to make sure they are running well and working in the depot of the customer so we're just starting to roll that out now um, and finally uh, we work of course in Milan's together with our competitors to also push the, need, the very much needed more uh, initiatives for public charging but I think that's where we have taken the first steps, but much more initiatives are needed to get to the 35,000 charge points that I mentioned that we're going to need in just a few years. Um, another topic to mention, but we also bring to the IAA, is we do also some updates on our conventional program. So the Actros L, which is our flagship uh, um, truck, will come with our new uh, Pro Cabin, the same cabin that we bring for the EAC Pro 600. We have really optimized the aerodynamics, so we expect a fuel consumption improvement of up to 3% with this new cab, only based on the aerodynamic improvements, so quite a huge improvement. Um, we also bring new safety features. I think this is part of the Mercedes-Benz truck's DNA, to really lead in terms of safety and we will go beyond the general safety regulation and bring new features to continue on that path of having a very safe truck. And thirdly, we also bring in the mid of next year a new multimedia cockpit into this truck. So we hope our customers will appreciate that one. And to sum up, I started by saying um, we are part of the problem and uh, I also want to end on a positive note to say for sure we are part of the problem but I think we can really be part of the solution and I really see, and this was also coming back to that reflection in the car, I see that we have taken some steps so I still feel very optimistic that we as an industry can be the change and I think that motivates me every day to be in this industry right now I know it motivates many of my colleagues to get up in the morning and go to work and I think and hope it motivates many of you who are also in this industry to be part of the change. beautiful mindset, actually, I have to say. So, as we are on a press workshop, officially you can ask questions, but we have a tight schedule, that's the downside, also an upside. And so if you have questions, we have time for two questions now, but then later, as Karin already mentioned, she will be presenting live on the Classic Stadtanau Media Mingle and Experience Tour, so there are well, more time for questions. Are there any questions from the audience? So they're all blown away. <laughs> or sleeping, I don't know. No, I don't think so. no, no, no. so uh, you could also use the coffee break. Oh, there's a question. So, my co-worker too, we'll just give you a microphone that we can hear you properly and then please say your name in the media and then to you. Uh, Markus Burgdorf, Association of the Motor Journalists in Germany. Um, I understand infrastructure is crucial for the success 
how can you raise the pressure that this infrastructure building goal is actually achieved? It's a good question. Maybe you have some more. But, but what we try to do is, of course, uh, I'm very active, as are my colleagues, uh, with both the EU and with the German government. Um, because I have sometimes the feeling that some politicians think it's a done deal a little bit, like they have not seen this slide. <laughs> um, so, so I think that's one very important. Then, of course, I think this was also one of the reasons why we founded Mylands. Um, I think it's a good business uh, in building infrastructure. The difficulty is, in the beginning, you have quite low um, use, usage. And then over time, it increases. So it's this chicken and egg. Um, and the reason why we founded Mylands was Okay, at least then we get started. And I do see also that, I mean, we, we work with also the partners like BP, like Shell, uh, other infrastructure partners, and they start to get going, um, but it's still a little bit not the speed we need. But I think to be very active with politics is, is, is the key. Um, and I think we as industry are very united on that front because we all have that challenge. There's a second question. Good morning, it's Fabrizio Dallenogare from Sustainable Track and Line. You mentioned the cooperation with Alvitronic and then with her, you are thinking about something different in terms of integration between vehicle and uh, charging system. Can you say something more about that? So, uh, what's going to be the, the cooperation with Alvitronic? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, when we are testing the trucks, we of course have to work with a big number of chargers because it has to work with all the, the common chargers used by our customers. And what we're doing specifically with Alpetronic is that through our own retail network, we will sell the chargers and then in collaboration with Alpetronic also offer uh, maintenance. Um, so that's the specifics on, on that collaboration. Thank you. And there's a third question from Jolene. So the microphone is coming up. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm Charlene Clark from Focus Magazine in South Africa. Um, I'm happy to see about the developments in the diesel truck because diesel is still very much an important product for our market and I think for many developing countries too. Um, would you say that this is one of the last IAAs that you will actually still have diesel technology displayed on your stand? Or is that something that we can see in the next two years, in the next four years, in the next six years? Or is this kind of it? Oh, uh, we have not yet started discussing what trucks we're going to show in two years. But um, honestly, we see this, this transformation happening in Europe primarily at this point in time. Um, but if you look at Mercedes-Benz trucks, we're a global company. I have around 50% of my global volume in Europe. So for sure, we need to be sure to stay competitive to offer our customers good products. Also in, in the other markets, maybe one example is, um, uh, from Miller also mentioned the Euro 7. And in conjunction with Euro 7, we will also bring our next uh, generation of engines. And for sure, the idea is that that will be for a longer time um, in the markets outside Europe where we see um, that the transformation might take longer. Uh, so uh, we continue to focus also to make our regular trucks more efficient.